kind of seen go back and forth sometimes Dyer though. Team right into the Dusa themselves. The uprising of Medusa once more. Again. No surprise. Yeah. Matches are very well against Life Steal lanes, well against DK. Now the question is do they want to just put DK there? Or pick Ten seconds remaining. a hero. I wanna see this, like I wanna have Zeus right now. Five seconds remaining. On Zeus. Galaxy? Galaxy. Or Tinker. I was gonna say like Invoker. That was my that's where I was gonna go. I mean Invoker is okay. It's a little boring, it can work. I wanna Tinker. You wanna Tinker? Tinker right there. Dude. Fifty percent max health gone every time. That, I mean T1 aren't gonna struggle with, with catching the Tinker. So that is definitely one thing. What's the other thing? Uh Radiant team ban. Tinker doesn't Dyer seem like the greatest ban. hero right now. And I don't want to see a Tinker, because screw that hero. I've had uh, enough enough damage from playing into Tinkers. It's kind of uh He's on the hate list, I must say. On who's hate list? Ten on my hate list. Remaining. Screw the Tinker, man. Dude, that here is not fun to play into. I think Five it has to be remaining. on a lot of people's hate list. No, no, no. So, Tech is way, way higher on the that's hate list. In, that's on the hate list. Definitely higher. But that's what I'm saying. Tinker's on that hate list. What is uh, What did T1 have to get off the hate list as well? What, what are we uh, looking to prioritize here? Actually, they got the first pick out. So we're looking for... A support you can flex. Would you rather the entries are five or four here? Probably mm, four. And you picked like an undying, I think. Looks really good. Should have the A, but you're gonna be able to win the lane, no problem. Security Medusa. They don't have the best tombstone hitters. Like they're decent, not great. Are you Radiant a bit worried though if you pick on dying then dk just pick. dodges the lane and then you go for like a, a hero that plays well into the undying because it feels like that hero is all on winning your lane yeah, but then you can just put the undying like in the off lane and put edge safe lane sure would give them very strong lanes at least like ancient undying are two of the strongest Ten laners it doesn't remain. scale super hard into the Radiant middle late game though pick. Behold the horn okay. of Magnus. so it's to support lash then or support Magmas? Or support Axe? No. Support Lash. Support e Magmas? <laughs> Surely support Lash. Ten seconds remaining. Well, now Tinker looks even better. Five and seconds Zeus. Remaining. And anything that deals damage from behind. Uh, sniper looks pretty decent as well. Big Sniper fan. Frag Grenade is a <laughs> Super good. Just don't pick Meepo. Don't pick Arc Warden, please. No, they won't. Let's, let's go for a different answer to the Medusa. Another way to outrange her, because the life still is not going to match up well versus Dusa. So you, you need an answer here for... I think it's got to be Alacrity. You know, giving Mizu the offlane DK, um, giving you some sort of yeah. win condition. Sniper is so good here. Is... Right now... Could you think of another route on like the Death Prophet to help you take towers and then sure, sure, of course. Group, group up early? Because you've said the DP can kind yeah. of be a win condition. Yeah, I mean, DP is always really strong. Not the strongest against Dusa, but just in general, it can always give you that W, no problem. Just uh, like thinking outside of the box can often win your games. And I do really think something like a sniper would be very nice or something that just deals damage from far away. Yeah. And they have that I'm game advantage. I've got the DK life there already. Yeah. Just pick, really. Tinker, Zeus, Sniper. Let's go. Tinker, Zeus, Sniper. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, man. So boring. But it's fine. Matches up well into the Axe. Or is it mid mag? Okay. Matches up very well into the mid mag, of course. Uh, but... They are on a pretty big timer, I'd say. They got triple anti-rage mechanics and anti-BKB mechanics. Do you believe Galaxy? Well, we've we've firstly, I'll say we've seen so far that teams playing on timers have looked very, very rough. Like they, 
we have not seen many teams be able to execute their draft to perfection where they can hit those timings and then end the game relatively early. Do we feel like Galaxy Racer can offset kind of the trend that we've been seeing? I mean, when I say late game looks rough for them, they, they, stu- they do still have ways of winning, of course. They got good instant initiations with Lion and Dragon Knight. Like, their yeah, late game scaling isn't bad at all. Just I'm a little bit worried that their BKB disables might be too strong. So it's not like they're playing like a push draft against the Medusa, right? Like, they can still scale. And even if it gets to that like, minute 60 mark, they can still win. So I don't think it's going to play too big of a role in this particular game. But yeah, like triple BKB, Pearson Disable is going to be rough to fight into the mid lake game. Nice horn on the Magnus, by the way. <laughs> Little drill. Bro, are you roasting his horn or are you actually a fan of it? I can't tell you. You got a little bit of a I like it. fan. You're a fan of the Mag horn. Yeah, I'm zooming in right now, actually. It's still drilling. I need to see what horn of the spiral boar. Bro, there's the chat lines in the way. Get rid of it. Get out of here, chat. Dude, he's not leaving. And on the head, he has the eyes of the Arden knock. Cool set. Cool set. See how Carl is. Is um, is Medusa a decent pairing with uh, with the Magnus? Because often we do see some of the the melee heroes. There are some range that play relatively well just because of their base damage. And is Medusa one of them? Sure. Like it completely offsets the split shot damage that you're losing. You're even gaining a little bit. And you know, despite you're not getting the cleave of course, like the bonus damage is really a big deal. Especially once Mag hits twenty five. It's close to like half of a DD. It's pretty significant. See, it definitely feels like T1, though. They've got a, a lineup that's a lot more slow-paced because Deuce is going to need to play the jungle. Mag really likes that farm. And until you get the blink on, on Cuckoo, then I don't see how active they can get. Maybe Enchantress with these rotations, you know, with the creeps, maybe they can have, like, a an early plus one. But until Axe gets a really good timing, I feel like Galaxy Racer can, can really make whatever plays they want to. The Galaxy, I think, needs to have pretty decent lanes in the mid and bot because Mag as well as uh, Axe are going to be the ones buying early blinks or early-ish blinks, probably not first item. And if you can slow them down enough, that would really make the game much easier to play for you. Okay, so how does this match up fair then with the Life Stealer and the Ancient Apparition into the, the Less Rack and the Axe? Do, do you feel like Galaxy Race have a lane where they can slow down Cuckoo? Yeah, they're going to bleed them out though. Like, you don't want to take uh, head on engagements. You just want to harass them slowly and just make sure that you win the region war. Is this where. I mean, Sorry, go. When you pick Lifestealer in general, like, that's always what you want to pick. Or no, not what you want to pick, what you want to do in the lane, right? You want to outsustain them. What the hero does. You know, uh, what's the itemization fit in your dream? Like, is there an Orb of Venom potentially on the cards just to, to help with your train, help with your trade, and just help with that kind of little bit of chip damage? Personally, a pretty big fan of corrosion on lifestealer in lanes like these, where you can be pretty aggressive. As I said, it though they're actually aggress uh, aggressing on the AA. So for taking a ton of damage in return, though. I mean, both supports are so squishy. <laughs> yeah. You see, Polo can harass from a little bit further away. I mean, Chilling Touch has got a 15 second cooldown though, but no one's playing for pools at the moment because both the small camp and hard camp is blocked. As we'll. Uh, you, you said the other lane to keep eye on, at least the, the hero, was the Magnus. If he can get a relatively good timing here on the blink. You said in the draft, though, that he's still going to struggle, though, first, the Death Prophet. So, and you know, we we'll see if Carl can get a, a little bit more catch up by the, the small camp. Yeah, it's, I mean, the same reasoning why DP was good against Patch earlier today and it's recognized and stuff, right? Like... Once you, once you get this uh, Spirit Siphon on them, it's just so much damage to sustain. And Carl is like, okay, GG, go next. <laughs> it does feel like... I mean, Alacrity with how... Not even just Alacrity as well, but also Mizu on this Dragon Knight. Like, you're going to have incredible ways to take these towers early, and... I worry that T1 are going to lose a lot of map control at the first like 12-13 minutes in this game where then you're 
really putting a lot of emphasis on just trying to secure one portion of your jungle in, in the triangle, and then you might end up losing too much of the, of the map and then too much of the farm. Nah, this is really how T1 loses this game quickly. If they lose lanes early, ooh, almost go into the tower, close, and then just lose the map control and lose all the farm. Because they are very gold reliant. Is there any like cute offsets they can play with the rotations? Like maybe uh, Enchantress leaving top lane early, but I mean leaving Medusa never feels the greatest either. Yeah, and they don't have the best tower pressure either. Like there's Death Prophet, there's Dragon there on the other team. What do you have? Not a whole lot, unfortunately. Like really the only pressure you can add is like Cuckoo cutting the wave and then maybe diving the, the lifesteal or, or diving someone and then you're using the creeps to, to do your dirty work, but that's so difficult because Lifestyle is an incredibly self-sufficient laner and you know, being able to bring him down is really not the easiest. What did you expect? Yeah, once that Vanguard is up on Axe though, which should be around the minute 6-7 mark, he should have no problem staying down here as well. We'll see also how... It's another game where stacks are so vital. I mean, it just feels like a, a broken record at this stage, but... We, we are consistently seeing every team, they have to make sure they have someone who can farm the Ancients. And well, you, you've got that really on, on Dire. Raining, this time, don't really have it though. Like a live Scylla, can't really do so. Mizu needs two points in order Dragon form before he can. And I don't think they're really going to use like an Exism to farm a stack. So, you know, Dire at least do have that advantage where they you might be able to get a little bit of a, an offset here by the Ancients. They have the economy advantage in that regard. It's just scary if they lose the map control too early, as we said earlier. It's the question of if they can have this greedy lineup and, and if it really is going to work in your favor. Yeah, so far, usually when we see greedy lineups, teams do get away with it. So far, though. Lane's looking relatively well for either team. I mean, Axe is struggling at the moment, but so is the live Lifestealer. Both these series kind of low on the CS chart. Yeah, Lifestealer's like super low base damage is always a big issue. Sitting there just 60. Once he's able to get another level up in the feast, then his harass potential is going to get a whole lot easier, but I mean, out harassing an axe with Vanguard, I, I feel like Cuckoo's gonna be kind of set in stone in this lane, and then you might see Zephyr and how he wants to, you know, maybe head up top because of Cuckoo being self-sufficient. See how those plays are gonna occur, but Kali's just already back to stacking up, farming the jungle, really trying to maximize his own game, play the play the macro game. It's the only real weakness of a plus four Lash. Like, rotations aren't that strong. Carl's taking a lot of damage. Don't want to have a blunder here. Ooh. Ah, he's gonna be all right. Pro player, after all. They're going up top on Savage. They might actually turn back for Yo Cam. White Mon. And they got one point in the Impetus. More lightning. So strong that spell. Does a lot of damage. Ah, no cooldown either. Axe are very close to the Vanguard now. Which also gives more damage to Lifestyle though, through that Feast, of course. It does look like, though, that... I mean, everyone's kind of happy with what they're getting out of this, though. What what do you feel like in your dreams, Ida build has to be this game for, for the Lifestealer? Radiance middle tower is under attack. Cookie Cutter build just armlet into San Shasha. And then uh, damage items will come in later. Like the big problem Lifestealer has is that other than Armlet, most of the damage items don't really build naturally for him. Does that make sense? Yep. Top tower is under and Alacrity is usually all top. They almost have Dragon Form as well. No, they don't. Half a level. Mizu? Right, one. She's baiting his life here as white man. Tuck around for a little bit too long. They're even going to bring in Zephyr, but Alacrity's damage right now is too much for T1 to handle. So now they're going to be able to pick up First Blood. Alacrity will find it. It does drag them off the tower. So the Exism will expire and they 
unable to take this. So it does give a lot of space to Carl, who's top of the last hits, steals the bounty away as well. So I guess it's a win for Dyer, even though you give up first blood. I mean, you don't lose an objective. And I think that is really the, the focal point that has to be harped on. Yeah, the timing was a little bit off where Dragonite wasn't level six just yet. Like if he was six, the tower is gone for sure. But he will be six uh, momentarily, so maybe they'll go back for round two. But good defense overall, so far at least. So they're sticking with three Mag heroes. There we go. Where are you going? Mizu tries Ooh. his own luck here. Gotta be careful. Stacking up the damage. They even got the Hadouken as well to add to it. Oh. So if I try to chase him down, but I mean, killing off a DK at this stage, you see how difficult it can be. Yeah, this is what we spoke about, all right? Like, Lesh isn't the best rotating support when it comes to this. However, the Axe is just cutting creeps and pulling them to the neutral, so he's no, getting a ton of farm. Might want to rotate some here to try to kill him. Hey, almost level six suddenly. Oh, Damn. wow. Wait, how's he got all this experience? I think he just took mid. Attack. Not sure. There's a lot of TP's bot now. They want to kill the axe. Well, they can definitely kill him multiple times when Polo gets six. Pre that, it's going to be difficult. They do have three point spirit siphon, but Cuckoo. Radiance Two points battle hunger if that movement attack. speed is enough. The issue is you've got a lot of lockdown. So if you can survive the initial lockdown, then escape afterwards. But the ice blast is kind of the big thing you're looking for here for Galaxy Racer because you were highlighting like you've got to keep tabs on Cuckoo. This blink timing is is massive for the side of T1. And before they get that, they can't make these plays. But when they get that, then they can look to get a little bit more active. Yeah. The Mac is also right now snowballing pretty hard though. Sitting comfortably at the top of the net worth. And it's a massive ancient stack again. <laughs> what is it, a quad? Yeah, that looks like a juicy old quad. See how early they want to pick it up. Looks like Carl's going to have a crack at it now. No possessed mask, unfortunately, but he'll take his time. Yeah, I mean, Mag is like an expert at doing this, right? He just gets so much cleave early on. Probably even easier than Sven. All the juicy neutral items too, potentially. We saw Radiant, they, they did move over there and place an Observe Ward, but I mean, now they haven't consistently kept tabs on the area. As, I mean, they're trying to kill off Zephyr up top and it's like he will be the second death of the game, but I have this thousand net worth lead and they will end up losing the tower, but they're getting something out of the map at least. Yeah, didn't get to get the gold on the Dusa though. So the quad stack went to the mag, which is not something you're like too upset about. But uh, Savage is probably like, yo man, from now on, this is my area. <laughs> well, it's, you, you funnel over a little bit more net worth to the mag early, then once he picks up that blink, then he can start to try and make the plays and, and get active with the, with the axe as well, which you know, speak about the axe is, 1200 go to the bank so he's getting closer and closer my only concern is this next kind of three and well, maybe even two minutes where maybe Radiant galaxy racer use this next exism to try and take the the t1 tower mid what level is he on the dp just nine so very far after level 12. yeah we're probably gonna have to wait for the next dragon form for them to be able to pressure the mid tower but we just they've seen the same thing uh, Zephyr? Alright, that's not what I meant when we saw the same thing, but he got blown. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Wait, what, what was he doing there? Did he have a ward? Uh, he must have been trying to deal with the tower, maybe. <laughs> Dude, what? <laughs> uh, like, I mean, there's. I don't know. There's space created, and then there's. uh, Then the space created, and then that was. Uh, and then there's universe created. There was neither of that. Yeah, no, that was uh, not what you're looking for. But, uh, like, they're at least still stalling this out. Like, they've got the Enchantress with the Wild Wind Ripper creep mid, so just even just putting a non hero body on the line just help shove out these towers. All that is completed now in life, so his timing is there ish. 
think it's time to press the issue a little bit. DP ult up, Dragon Form up. He already used Dragon Form actually. Needs more heroes, you know. Card is almost level 12 already. Yeah, you. I really want to see Radiant smoke up and wrap around mid. Because you just need to use these abilities to take towers. Otherwise, you're delaying the game where this is what T1 want. You, you want to mag free farming. You want to do some free farming. And, and now you've got blink completed. So this can be where T1 start to get a little bit more active and, and look to further defend their towers with ease. Yeah, this first like two or so team fights are gonna really tell the story of this game. If Raid and Summer win it, they should be in a very good spot. But if T1 win it, I dare say that attack. it's like almost an auto win for them if they win like two team fights in a row with their lineup. They are looking for a smoke. Heading up to the top side of the map, Cuckoo plus the two supports right now. They're gonna catch the Death Prophet, but oh, Zephyr popped the smoke. Yeah, and he silenced himself because he was screaming <laughs> out of fear. Like, ah! <laughs> Don't let him know I'm here. <laughs> it's like you are starting to get some very stat intensive items, and and now like it's gonna get to the stage where Savage can just put his body on the front line and make it a little bit easier to defend this tower. Like, I, I don't know about you, but I'm very worried with Galaxy Racing not taking this tier one already mid. We can see uh, them a lot, right? Regarding their willingness to just sit back and farm. Yep. Like, you got to be able to play both uh, both ways, because if you sit back and farm against this lineup, you are going to be in, in trouble. It feels like often they have just been waiting for Mizu's blink on the Dragonite, which he does have now completed. So this has to be the item they're looking for, but they definitely just could have ran down the lane here and you've got a DP, you've got a Dragonite who you said the power of this hero can just be to, to wrap around a tower and then have this brute force hero that is not easy to kill. Radiant's so maybe with attack. a blink, that uh, there has to be something they were waiting for and, and now we'll see if they look to, to make a play with it. And Mizu's just gonna show his blink. Yeah, okay. Well, that surprise is gone. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Interesting. Generally, what you see is like a smoke up, and then we're gonna get at least a kill with the blink. But he's like, nah, 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 I'm good. Bro, this is my farm. You think I want kills? <laughs> Dude, creeps are juicy. So we have to finger a old combination online again. I have so much burst potential. Get these pickoffs. Let's go. Ramp it up. Now, Mag's got a blink as well. Radiant's so if Dyer can under attack. Oh, white mon. Perfect position. Come on, sprites. Savage is nearby. Carl as well, but there's the burst. Cuckoo's looking to block the retreat, but even faster fingers from your camp preemptive with the hex. And with three man silence as well, Maki blinked into the middle. And this is the fight Galaxy Racer were looking for. They're going to drop the RP, but mizu has got the fob. And Death Prophet's a beefy person. Can they bring him down though through the chain lockdown? They can. <laughs> All right, so do the Death Prophet will fall. They do at least stall this out. It was looking like a great fight for Galaxy Racer, but solo RP used there and they just drop everything on the Death Prophet. Yeah, like this is the problem that we spoke about. Sure, you killed the Axe and the Ench, but two important heroes survived. And they're getting bigger and bigger. They're sitting comfortably at the top two net worth. And what do you do about it? Invading is just going to get harder and harder. Yeah, I mean, now it feels like you, you've you got a big cooldown now. DP ultimate's on cooldown. Your burst is on cooldown with the finger. No Elder Dragon form for another 60. Even though Empower's on cooldown, you can just sit behind 23. He's got Dragon Lance. He's got Yasha. They got Medallion to buff him up from White Mon. He's going to build four staff. Like, this is really, really worried now. Yeah, it's only 2k lead. But with a lineup this greedy, and a lineup that scales so well into the late game, it feels like much more than that. And it feels like, you know, the issue is, is that we both were in perfect agreements is this is how the game had to play. But a Galaxy Racer had to have awareness of this as well. Like, Radiant these are incredibly high level players as Carl just gets a pick off. Like, they have to know their timings and a little bit worried that they just didn't play around it. Like. I, Yeah, losing Radiant's heroes solo like that also never feels good. 
Like. Mid lane, Death Prophet. Mid lane, yeah. Alacrity's just dead. Another free pick off here is. This is getting messy now. Yeah. Like, I feel like when games start looking like this, you kind of know that they aren't sure of what to do next. Which I can't blame them for. At this state of the game, it's so hard to do anything. I uh, will see them smoke up. I have to imagine. You got level 2 in Exism. You still really want to utilize this early blink. DK just picked up two points in Elder Dragon form as well. Uh, he's looking to scale though. He's, he's wanting the, the Sanjin Yasha instead of the second item BKB. So... It's still going to take him a while to hit that, but I just want to continue to see Galaxy Race up get ag aggressive. And well, maybe this Dire Observer Water may have scouted out Mizu before the smoke. This is a play, though. Yeah. They had to do like five minutes yeah. earlier, even oh, screw it, like eight minutes earlier. Like this wrap behind the tier one Dyer's tower with In Your Dream tower. showing. They'll just bait Savage. They'll have Edge on the front line. They're going to jump to Magnus if they can bring him down to start. But a beautiful call from Cuckoo disrupts the initiation. Now they can look to reset on the back line. It's 23 Savage freely sieging them down. It's a one for one to start the fight. But where's the follow up coming through afterwards? They'll still kill off Zephyr. Three down on T1. And it looks like that's all she wrote here is Carl. It's actually going to TP in the midst of it all before this tower falls. <laughs> Did a decent fight though, just losing two supports. Like all the cores survive, it's very important. So they get like a decent amount of gold. It's just once again the two important heroes of the dire. Don't die, I get a couple of kills. Keep scaling, keep scaling. Magnus should be very close to his BKB, just a thousand off. Dusa, just two thousand off Manta. Uh, sorry, uh, Scotty. And once the Scardi is up, that's like Life Dealers and Death Prophet's biggest nightmare. Even Dragonite hates playing against that. Yeah, just the kiting and the reduction as well. What, 40% with the heals, the HP regen, or the Life Seal and Spell Life Seal too to add on to that. So it's going to be an incredible item here for 23 Savage, who's already got one ultimate orb and you know, well and truly on his way to picking up a, a great timing here on the Scardi. Yeah. And might just be a slow death again, just like we've seen the last game. And I keep saying how strong Dusa is, and all, all of the teams keep picking it. <laughs> Top lane. A pick off on Zephyr. This is still the thing that Galaxy Rays have going for them. This quick and easy pick off where Die, you know, they don't have this hard to spell to, to lock them out of the chain lockdown. This is what they're relying on, though. Radiant, they really, really need this. One pick off, maybe a second pick off, into then having a numbers advantage for a team fight. As Polo's gonna get jumped here, and you know, Polo's gonna end up falling. <laughs> Level 19 Magnus. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Ah. Haste. Well. Oh. I missed the RP. Still chasing. Just gonna miss this here. This is nearby. They need more heroes. Well, now the calls have been answered here with Alacrity's boots of travel. Haste is dispelled off now. He can BKB, but he can't TP out. Skewer back up in a couple seconds. Let's see if he can get the blink afterwards. Alacrity needs. Oh, he popped Exo instead. Oh, they're going to go to Roche now, yeah. They ping it straight away. No RP. So maybe it's doable. It's, it's very risky, though. Like, this is the game deciding fight here. It's all eyes on Cuckoo now. Without the RP, you need the Axe to be the one to start these fights. Cuckoo blinks on cooldown, though, so he can't jump the pit. Exism, though, it's about to expire. Got a quarter duration left, and they're not going to be able to bring Roshan down oh. through it, so you've got to stick in the air, because if T1 see how low it is, they might just sneak in and try and take you. Was a quad snake as well in your face. Oh, this feels, this feels really uncomfortable for for the radiant here. Uh oh. Radiant are scanning. They can wait for RP and then they get a free roll, pretty much. They have a smoke on one of the supports. Yeah, White Mon's got a smoke. See if they get their lanes in a position where they can look to smoke. But radiant, they want to pick off though. Infest it up, yo cam, but not gonna find anyone.
see. Ah. What do you do next? Very good question. It's all in Roche now, it feels like. <laughs> oh, it's a support life. DD to Roche, though. Wait, who picked up DD? Did it get denied? I think it got denied. I think A denied them. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Scotty do so. A to Scotty do so. Now do you start this? Yokem's gonna blink in. But he's unable to steal the ages, so Lion will fall. The commit the exism. Maybe the three calls on Galaxy Racer can turn this fight on its head. But an even better RP from Cole. Finds two heroes. Followed up with the split earth as well. Ready to have the survivability to go through the chain lockdown. They do not. The net worth lead is too far superior for T1. There's now Cuckoo's looking to chase down Mizu. That's going to be a difficult task, but this is in dire territory now. Yeah. This game is almost impossible Radiance to recover at this point. And... Radiant structures are fortified. Yeah, I mean, you kind of did that to yourself. Like, if you want to be the team... Because we know, Galaxy Racer loves to play like that, right? They just want to relax, sit back, palm out themselves. If you want to do that, you cannot pick... Like, like this. You're basically picking Lifestealer into two possible hard counters, and they pick two hard counters, and now you're... Radiant's on the clock, clock expired, and don't know where you go from here. It's just another game where we've seen the clock expire and the team, it's just a slow death. Like, I, I cannot believe how many games we've seen so Radiant's far through the, the Loop Bet Pro Series fallen. where it's literally been that case. Yeah, I mean, playing fast this patch in general isn't easy, so securing yourself some chance at late game at least is pretty important and the last shot is already online look at the area it covers oh my god it's so big he's pretty fond as well in Zephyr I mean Philosopher's Stone helps a lot and he's also a support that can you know, clear the waves clear the neutrals so highest net worth out of the sports the eighth lens glimmer cape and he's going just more utility with the four staff next item yeah, while at the top, still the Dusa Magnus, getting ever stronger. The jungle has Carl's got his level 20 desire. talent, Dusa as well with the level 20 talent as well, so he's going for that Mystic Snake. Man again, of course, and mm. Savage is looking to just ramp up his damage output as well. Crystallis being completed. We even got the, the axe that's transitioning very well into the late game with that Manta style as well. So we'll probably see the Aghanim Shard be his next item of choice. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Yeah, I would like to see T1, like they don't need to end the game or anything, but just be playing a little bit more aggressively. Make use of your ults and then go back to farm. Because sure, you're Radiant's still middle tower has winning, fallen. but I think you should just pressure more so that you're winning more, if that makes sense. Like you always want to press your advantage. That's what they're doing right now. Make sure the enemies are all tipping back. Ooh, Savage. Cuckoo. Nice. Another Way great timing tank. on the call, but Carl an even better RP. Luckily enough, the life still got the rage, so he wasn't dragged back, but you put Mizu in a peculiar spot where there's no help, and, and you just skew him away, then you cover the potential reinforcements with a split earth, and the AoE control that T1 have, it, it just makes it so difficult for Galaxy Racer to find an angle. Ah, this is tier 3 gone. We don't want to go for more. They can, no problem. Again, Carl. He'll find the lion this time. That burst, that control, just pick off after pick off. You still got the ages for another minute 17 here. Well, in your dream's gonna try and do all he can, but the Scotty freshly completed. He'll buy back on Yokam. But starting this fight into Split Earth, into Ages, into the potential counter-initiation that we've seen time and time again from T1. It's a difficult task. And In Your Dream's just tickling down the Dusa. Tickle, tickle. Yep. <laughs> and then, infest. <laughs> you just have no damage whatsoever. All right, jump in onto the mag. 
Doesn't have the BKB. Now with the Exism used as well in your dream. They need to deal with the supports. They're going to do just that. Get rid of the Enchantress. Get rid of the Leshrac. Great awareness from Galaxy Razor. You can't kill the cores until they're the last remaining. They want to continue to kite the Medusa. They'll go for Cuckoo next. But you got to be careful because 23 Savage, though, his damage still looking to ramp up. They're unable to cancel the TP. But now Medusa, she's got no help. She's still got the Ages. Another 20 seconds here. They're burning all her mana out. But oh, oh what do you know? Back up to full mana. Carl's still stuck around as well. He can get involved in this second life. Are they going to wait for it, though? 10 seconds, they will. They've got the timer. Great awareness from Galaxy Racer. They're still sticking in. Five Savage is like, what do I do? I can't run. I can't hide. A couple more seconds. The Aegis should tick out and jump on the back lane. The double Earth smack as well. The Aegis timing it out. They'll kill off the Dusa. Now Carl's going to BKB to the skewer away, but Cuckoo's back in the midst of it all. A battle hunger into the retreat. He's goddamn speedy, and that should be enough. <laughs> well, at least they managed to somehow stop the bleeding. That was very well done because the, the mag previously had to use his BKB to get the deep score in, which probably was a mistake on his part because that kill wasn't really important at all. Your BKB is much, much more important. And they do kill the Medusa. However, look at the stack they're making for her as a little, you know, respawn <laughs> present. And yeah, like you yeah, killed her once, but it was basically 1v5, attack. right? <laughs> You're saying this stacks for douches are cuckoo's like, you no oh, sir. Yeah. Okay, never mind, sorry. <laughs> my bad. Dude, cuckoo's like, you think? What the hell? This is my farm. Cool. I oh, have yeah, 14k lead still. Next Roche. Probably up in about three ish minutes. Dyer are scanning. Right, Zephyr still scaling. I mean. Their lineup was so greedy and they got away with all of it. Rough. Got, got rough, away rough, with rough. the greed and... I mean... That is the one fight where Galaxy Racer have shown the recognition. Like, you just... Quite often against the Medusa, you, you have to leave it to last. Just kite her as much as you can. Kill the supports. Then go after that. And, and I mean, it definitely was a lot easier just because the RP was on cooldown, just because a lot of the BKBs were on cooldown as well. So doing that a second time is going to get more difficult. But they've they've Radiance seen the path to victory attack. through a team fight. Maybe they can do it a second time, and then you know maybe that can transition into a third time. Radiance top tower has fallen. Potentially, definitely what they're looking for. But when they grouped up as five, I don't know how you stop this dire death ball. Heal us. Whitemon once again. Attack. Maybe if Whitemon dies. Gonna drop everything on the Enchantress, that Ice Boss. Is he gonna jump on forward as well? See what more he can catch here. <laughs> oh, this, this Dragon Breath with the Black Dragon is actually insane. How much slow is that? 60%. No problem. That's fair. We've seen a lot of these abilities have like a stupid amount of slow, like the uh, TA trap slow is ridiculous. Enchantress, don't even get me started about the Enchantress slow. One le one value point, 55% slow. <laughs> what? Life there, that's like a normal number, right? 25 over 4? Yeah. Sounds okay. Why does it have to be like 60? <laughs> one, sec one second is over, resume right now. They lied. Jeez. Bunch of back, lies. Rick. Yeah. You gotta call them out. You you spilling these lies? I mean, we got potential kids watching, man. You, you just can't be Places to be that. also, man. Straight up. Like, when you said one sec, I literally made plans instantly. <laughs> I got the... And now I can't attend. Yeah, dude, you got those dinner reservations in your quarantine. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's me right there. Straight up. Straight up. What's the what's the thing you're looking forward to doing once you uh once you get out of quarantine? My cat. I'm very happy to see my cat again. Haven't seen him in like don't know how many months, man. <laughs> like what eight or something? You're like a castaway at this point. You've been away from home for so long. You got this. Have an exile, dude. <laughs> dude, they literally <laughs> booted you out. We don't want yeah, him coming just... back. Yeah, like we're scared of his power. And it should be. 
Everyone should be. I'm a very powerful man. <laughs> What's so funny? Dude, you're just lying to people again. I'm lying. Yeah, man. What? Why? <laughs> you're not powerful, though. How am I not powerful? <laughs> T1's power is continuing to grow, though. Uh, this definitely doesn't feel not like... right now. Because game is paused. Yeah, well, as soon as this game's on pause, then their power will continue to grow. Yeah, but it's... All right, whatever. Well, maybe... You're lying now, maybe too. No, maybe their power is still growing, because maybe they're talking about the game, and they're planning out their next moves, masterminds on T1. Powerful, though. It makes them smarter. What's the uh, what's the number one thing you you uh, and any of your teammates like to do when when you're in this long pause time? Talk about what's happening next, D and yeah, then but... you forget about it because you don't know what state the game is in at that point. How much does like pauses like throw you off completely? Because it does really feel like Dota is a feel game, and and as soon as you pause, you start to lose tabs on where everyone is, and you, and you forget those little important factors. It's really bad. Usually after a long pause, somebody instantly gets picked off somewhere. Why well, we all hate pauses. Paulison could be the one. He's like, oh, what am I doing? Uh, where was I? Or maybe Carl. Who's it gonna be? They're like, are we still behind? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh, now my <laughs> Let's just make it another okay. one. Second time, so maybe this is increasing the probability of someone getting uh, someone getting picked off. So many mic issues in twenty one. <laughs> yeah, what what even mic issues would you have? <laughs> what? It doesn't work. For some reason the the power just dies. Like it's working in the middle of the game, you're like, what the hell? To people. Technology. People still, I feel like Discord has to be the main use, right? But I still see people use like TeamSpeak and stuff like that. I'm like, excuse me? TeamSpeak is alright. Bruh. What? Not like Discord, though. What's the difference, bro? I know. That's a good point. I mean, they're both just good old voice chats. I feel like Discord just seems easy to use for me. What about Ventrilo? Dude, what the hell? What, the, what is that? You don't have Ventrilo? No, I don't. What the hell? Is this some like uh Southeast Asian like voice chat thing? No. What is what is it? I Google it later. <laughs> this is something I want to Google? Yeah. You might be leading me into a trap or something. Just virus on my computer. Okay. I don't know about you, man. You got some ill intentions. What the hell? <laughs> Since when? Dude, always. I'm telling you, I'm trying to get chat to help me. Like, you, they don't see how you treat me off stream. It's horrendous. How am I treating you? I treat you the way you like it, boy. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Galaxy Race is not liking how they're being treated, though. Yeah, so they're disconnecting and say, mic problems. <laughs> Should play some uh, noughts and crosses while they wait. Like, if we can, if it's Savage is like, <laughs> Savage Man, is, is straight to the point. It's Discord. Say Discord. Can't reconnect. Savage wants to go play some Valorant, that's why. I mean, of course. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that, uh, like, everybody involved knows this game is sort of over. What did you expect? Oh my god. Restart PC. Well. GG. Dude, you reckon... What do you say the probability is right now for a potential of Galaxy Racer to, to bring this one home? 1%. 1%. You're really... Okay, let's let's theorize here. We've got plenty of time. Let's get crazy. Oh. Let's let's yep. find out how they can, can bring this back with that 1%. Uh, bait them into the tier 4, spy back, and kill them without BKBs. Ah, oh, that looks very difficult. Yeah. There's no way you're ever going to win a fight outside of base unless, like, it's some sort of arena fight where it's like 5v1 and they trickle in one by one. And Radiant. Galaxy Racer versus 23 Savage. 
Bro, Deuce is just gonna 5v1. The classic. I, honestly, at this point, she she might be very close to be able to do it. No neutral item equipped, though. Oh and my god. She, I know why. It's because, dude, Mag's got two. He's got Paladin Sword and the Tunic. What a hoarder. I hate you, neutral item hoarders. Bro, you tell him. Just to choose one, brother. Carl, what do you want? You, you want the sword? Do you want the tunic? Like, Actually, like, like tier one. When somebody holds the tree and, and the ocean heart, you're like, yo, what's the point, young man? Dude, it's uh these neutral items. I'm intrigued to see if you uh if you get your your wish of the, the token token system. It does feel like it needs a little bit of a switch up. Imagine it happens at TI. I should get like half of the commission. <laughs> Dude, what? What? Half of the commission. Yeah. Dude, that's a lot of commission there, brother. <laughs> Boss. Dude, Thank what? you. So strong, guys. I'm so strong. Why has no one got any effigies? What is Rady doing? That, that's what. You, okay, Dyer's got one. Let's see. Can't even look at it. Uh... Bro, remember when shrines were always in the base? <laughs> Dude, how stupid was that? That wasn't very stupid. What do you mean? Dude, Toto is not fun. It was lovely. Oh, yeah? What happens if they don't unpause in five minutes? Uh, then the game unpauses automatically. Yes. Can I play 4v5? Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, can I unpause the game myself? I don't know, but I'm, dude, I'm always <laughs> worried. Dude, uh, I don't know if I want to press F9 right now. I am <laughs> always so worried about accidentally pressing F9. Like, I, uh... Dude, I'm so tempted of doing it. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> you wouldn't. What's the odds? Wait, is it? possible for a caster to do it no right yes yes it is possible yeah but if they say go i'm gonna press it <laughs> <laughs> ah i couldn't do it dude, i saw it yesterday it's one of the when did we ah oh, i'm pretty sure maybe it was a couple days ago where one of the other uh one of the other casters did it <laughs> Like, oh, that's so awkward. I will Google right now. Can I mean I've seen it. I this just saw it in a couple days. Us. Why aren't you believing me? I believe you, but I'm. That was like he wasn't in a castle slot, was he? I know. I all I saw someone did it recently. I don't know if they're in a castle slot. I don't know if they're on assigned. I don't know. All I know is we got a game back. We'll see. Who's the one to get picked off? No one's looking like they're uh, in a prime position at the moment. So, you know, still the status quo of this game. T1, 15,000 net worth lead. They've got a melee advantage at the moment in the middle lane. We're going to have Roshan up in 50 seconds as well. So it looks like Galaxy Racer trying to get outside the base. Maybe see if they can place their, some wards down to at least contest this. Because giving it over for free is just going to make their high ground defense even more difficult. Oh, if they could find a do side, it would be a very big one. And they're Light blinking mom. up. He's going to pop this Savage instantly. Stone Gate's going to come into fruition here. They'll burst through the Enchantress. So once again, Sport's going to get taken out of the fray here. Doesn't have a buyback as well. Car's going to jump in, but the Orchid out with the RP. They need the perfect stun lock as well with the Cold. Just off the mark, so in your dream. Is that get the Rage away? The status resistance coming into play there. They even dropped the Exism though. Mizu has the fob control straight on top of the Axe. Now Yokam and Alacrity can close the distance. It's going to be another kill going the way of Galaxy Racer. But Carl's going to look to jump in. Offset the numbers disadvantage they have currently. That's a BKB committed there for just a solo Ancient Apparition, and Roshan is now available. Are under Very big miscommunication by the Dyer. Like if they get the life there, they win the fight, Radiant hands down. But the call just barely missed. He probably has to commit the buyback on... Or maybe not. No exorcism. Uh-oh. I feel like if Radiant doesn't take this Roshan now, it's Dyer's. And that's game over right there. Gotta, gotta make a plan. 
And quick lack. They have another smoke? Yeah, Polo's got a smoke. He's down for 10. If they can look for another pick off. And BKB is still on cooldown. RP on cooldown. Maybe that numbers advantage might allow you to then head into Roche. Because still taking a, a head on team fight against T1 is very difficult. Yeah. Now there's another layer of fear for in your dream, this Orchid. Soon to be Bloodthorn. It's a lot of damage coming into him. Dude, Jeff has got an Octarine too. <laughs> it's a lot of life stunts. Yeah. From very far away as well. Radiant? Is this another occurrence where Roche is going to be given up for free? Okay. Wow. Well, that's game. Has now. Who got what? Magnus? Oh, the Horn Toss. Yeah, that's a good one. You rate this over the, the Dusa? Yeah. Let's take a free initiation, basically. Toss them over your horn, Ooh. score them in, and then hopefully hit the call that time. <laughs> Ada boom, bada bim. What do you go? Bam. Carl's got that level 25 talent too. Radiant. They are smoked up. Mag was shown top. Cuckoo's alone, but they need In Your Dream to not pop the smoke before Cuckoo blinks away, but he's too late. Cuckoo! Reactions was... just aren't there. Yeah. <laughs> I think he was buying his BKB or something. <laughs> it looked, he had like a one second. <laughs> uh, that's like Ares' reaction. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> I mean, that's fair enough. Top I know. Top I wouldn't lie to our viewers, yeah. You wouldn't make a robust call like that. Yeah. Unless I was absolutely certain, right? Okay. <laughs> You're a hater. Orchid, <laughs> well, Bloodthorn actually now picked up on Mag. Oh. He's building it to nullify a next item. This is a juicy, mag. juicy Mag. <laughs> you get the joke? <laughs> Big Mag? <laughs> She's just so cringe. <laughs> it's getting late again, eh? <laughs> Dude, it's not even. What do you mean? What do you mean it's getting late? It's 7.30 for you. Yeah? Dude, Dude late. that's not late. Dude, I woke up at, like, when? <laughs> Good question, brother. Like, like, five or something. What? What time do you go to sleep? Like, midnight. You woke up at five. You went to bed at midnight and you woke up at five. Yeah. Do you know how much sleep that is? <laughs> Not enough. <laughs> what do you mean? Dude, yeah, it's oversleep right there. <laughs> what? What? 5 a.m.? Oh, I thought you had five. Like, I'm like, 5 p.m.? What's going on? Dude, we have been casting for four <laughs> hours. How is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> your brain <laughs> dude it's getting late what can i say <laughs> oh savage look at this let's just evade the silliness carl oh nice hex okay they gotta kill off the observer ward with the jump in bkb not used just yet a lot of damage being dealt but now with the infest giving them the bonus health radiant they've at least survived the initial jump but the issue is is that <laughs> Like, going on Dusa now with Aegis, with Cheese, double split Earth on the ground, it's, oh, it's such a difficult task. I'm mean, right to get him for An 50 eternity. mana hit. You need this Ag Shard online. You need to soak him dry, baby. Look, he's just right to get him. The Dragon Fall was almost over. <laughs> oh, this is silly. Oh, and the best mana spot. Ancient Rock Golem. That's like full mana right there. He doesn't want the mana. He's just gonna stick around and go for bottom. It's very comfortable right now, Savage. With the position he is. He even gets a leveler as well if he wants to switch that in. Yes, sir, he will. Now this push is gonna get even easier. Radiant. I love how it's called the leveler. Uh oh, they found in a dream. Ooh. 
They need the perfect chain lockdown. We didn't see it previously, but this time we'll see it. He's got a buyback to be able to rejoin them, but it might just be a little bit too late. They're already losing massive amount of numbers. Alacrity with the jump in. Here come the buybacks with the ultimates on cooldown, but is it going to be enough, however, with the numbers advantage? Alacrity chasing him deep further. Once again, they need to cut the Medusa. Medusa's out of mana, though. Can she pop the cheese on the first life? Does she even want to use it? Hex is up, and they're able to bring her down. Instant use of the infest. They're going to try and look to reset. Jumping up to the northern side. Alacrity is hunting through Cuckoo. Very low amount of health here for the Axe, and Axe is going to end up falling. Now they've locked on 23. Sue has the cheese in the arsenal here. Can they go through the full life and also the mana as well? Four stuff tossing him back and forth, but they've soaked him dry. Now with the chain control as well, she's unable to get the cheese off. Medusa's down, no buyback. Carl can he get the TP out? He'll make it. Zephyr will make it as well. Oh. Well, they did stop the bleeding once more, but the gold lead is just steadily growing and growing and growing because it cost them a ton of buybacks. And really, they only win team fights when this RP is on cooldown. Like, next RP on the lifesteader is probably gonna spell his death. Oh, they're looking for the Magnus. Ooh, Carl doesn't even know, but he evades them anyway. What a god gamer. Radiance top barracks has fallen. Someone's pigging. Yeah, this is teammate. No, never mind. Mizu? He's like, ah? Something's not right. I can't believe Carl is doing it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. Wait, they're coming. I. Carl is... like... <laughs> can he get Hex? Quick fingers? He can. Cuckoo, can he get in range there with the chain lockdown? BKB's available. A little bit too late on Mizu, though. Still, they got the Bashes, so Carl. They can't TP away, not even available. It's still on cooldown with the blink forward. Carl is gonna Radiant's fall! What's going on? Cuckoo's caught as well! Alacrity finds the axe! He's got BKB, it, it, blink it. up in a couple seconds! Cuckoo doesn't get it off! Bash uses her out now from in your dream! Back inside the base, four stuff. Oh my lord, what's going on? He's just that still alone was a 5k gold swing. Damn. How is that possible? How's one kill 5k gold? I mean, Mizu's got MKB now, so his damage is going to start to rack up. We said if he can reach this territory, there's a chance that he can potentially come back. But well, surely not, right? Nah. Surely. Surely, like, nah. I mean, it's two full set to barracks advantage here. Ah, uh, you've got an 18,000 net worth lead. Are there any other timings about to be picked up here from Radiant? Mizu 25 is pretty soon. Level is nice for the life stealer. He's got 4k gold, so Satanic. Handy with his sustain. I feel like I want to see a Daedalus. But, I mean, he wants to build Satanic, of course, to dispel the Bloodthorn. I'm just wondering if they might run into damage issues or not. But I guess if you survive long enough... Yeah, never mind. I like the satanic. It's good. Are we a fan now of the nullifier on the mag? Because you were saying that it feels like they're able to win fights with RP, but do you think he actually has to commit for like a refresher, so to say? I mean, he builds a nullifier against the Aeon discs, of course. It's hard to say. Honestly, like Radiant is getting into the territory where three of their cores are more than ready to fight. Once the Satanic is up, and he can dispel the Bloodthorn, he should be pretty much unkillable as well. Well, not unkillable, but much harder to kill. And they're just going back down again. If they lose this team fight, then T1 is in trouble. We do see how Panic difficult it is. is. Done. It is really difficult. But, as they say, good things don't come easy. They're gonna get back, though. Position yourself. Bottom tower is under I was falling fast. Get the formation set from Galaxy Racer. I've got vision inside the base as well. But they're going to put Savage on the front line. Oh, who jumped in? Cuckoo. Hexed up. But they're going to try and evade the axe. Alacrity. Hex is amused. Jumping on top of the back line here. Medusa. 
Still in a respectable amount of health to play with. Alacrity, nice, just the Stormcrafter, but still, how do you want to target down the Death Prophet? Aeon is finally committed, but the Axe isn't able to join the Ronin. He was prioritizing dealing with the Lion in the back line. Cuckoo will assassinate a second target. They've got a TP cancel though, but the Bash is coming into fruition. So Cuckoo, I mean, he's done his job at killing off the supports and forcing a buyback. Yeah, that's again, buybacks having to be forced or rather committed to be able to hold on. But maybe if the cores can like get one or two more items. Like they almost killed, well, they didn't really almost kill her, but like half the mana pool was gone real fast. So maybe one item each and they will be able to do it. Didn't see an RP though. Oh, Roche is up. Not another freebie, right? Surely not. Refresher oh. shard available. Aegis cheese, of course, as well. And well, instead of buying refresher, let's just uh, let's just get it from Roche. Why not? Dude, this is falling so fast. Chunk, 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 chunk. Magnus's damage plus 342. He's sitting for 550 damage. 570 even now with the nullifier. If he, he needs a Daedalus. Get rid of that Echo Saber. We need some Giga Chat items here. <laughs> In, what has he got? It, overwhelming Blink queued up at the moment from Carl. They haven't actually given him the Fresher Shard. They're still holding it on Medusa. Do you feel like this could sway your fight differently instead of uh, double RP? I mean, he does have a BKB coming in the Korea, so potentially for double BKB. But yeah, slots are a problem now for him. But for Magnus as well. He's already bootsless. If the fight breaks out in the next 15 seconds, which it looks like it won't because T1 aren't playing with this creep wave, but could have been an issue with the Exism on cooldown. It's up in five seconds. In your dream, level 25. So plus 1.5 rage duration. Ha, ah, can they find an angle? Come for a smoke up. They need to deal with the backline once again. Going on top of 23 Savage with multiple lives is going to be a tough task here as they jump in. Cuckoo, straight on top of the Dragonite. You see the burst? I mean, they're just trying to dodge away from the Medusa. Alacrity though, bonus health coming into play with the Infest, but it's still a little respectable health to play with now. In your dream's going to jump out. They're prioritizing Cuckoo. Cole's going to give him a bunch of bonus armor now with the jump in. Cole hasn't found the RP. The Bash is there. Can he get the cheese off Cole? It's just able to in the nick of time, but now he's going to skewer to safety. And Savage, he's falling low on his first life. here. shot. It's going to be prioritized. Doesn't have another round of the BKB. It's still in the backpack, but still Galaxy Race. A nice RP. Cole, he finds both the Death Prophet and the life still with the buybacks on cooldown. That might be all she wrote. It's T1. They just needed... That third verse to end it all. DP will rejoin them. But I, I think now with Radiance Megas on the cards here, the side of Dyer should be able to claim this second game. Yeah, it should be all she wrote at this point. No buyback on life steal forever. He actually had the cooldown, just not the gold. Uh, that stinks, but... One more try. try. Bursting down Savage from 4 to 0 is going to be a difficult task as Carl, you can just toss him away straight on top of multiple the Split Earths here. We'll see how long they can stall this one out for. Going through Alacrity is difficult. Once Cuckoo gets the jump with the pure damage, he gets ripped apart 4 to 0. We're going to another Game 3 tonight as T1 will even up the series. It took him a while to crack the code, but 46 minutes in, they were able to do so. Yeah, ultimately, I mean, it, it, this is just how Galaxy always plays, so we can't really fault them for it. But if you want to draft, or like rather, if you want to play like that, you got to draft accordingly, because this time around, like, you did not have the luxury to just sit idle and not pressure. Like, the, the Magnus, Medusa, Axe combo early game is just very weak, and you need to be able to punish that. Like, none of them went first item blink, and yeah, they, they just didn't manage to cause any economy damage at all in the early game. We said they had three BKB piercing stuns and Lifestealer until the very end where he was like five, six started, couldn't even play Dota at all. Yeah, it's, it's going to be the question of we're just seeing now like 
too many drafts that are on a timer and are unable to hit that timing. And when it gets to this late game, you you don't really have a way to combat versus it. And I mean, they still props have to be given. I, I think to Galaxy Racer with how they were able to craft multiple team fight victories and and almost find a route back in this game. But in the end, T1 they're able to to close it out again. It, it did take them a while, but at least they're able to tie up the series here and, and head to our second game three of the night. Now we'll find out who's going to move on to face Fnatic in the upper bracket finals and who's going to drop down into the lower bracket. We'll find out shortly after a break. 